All right, y'all. So I'm gonna try to give you the skinny here on uh, C and C and. Um, so as I said, graphite's gonna be probably the only thing I will see and see with this, other than maybe some balsa wood. Uh, both of them are pretty easy to see and see, and shouldn't be too hard on the joints in the machine. Um, if I find there's enough interest that a lot of people want stuff done, then I will probably get a separate machine for it. Now, with that said, I've turned this on. I'm gonna break this video into pieces and try to keep it as quick and as as I can. So this is uh, the Make Something Wonderful page. We have to go to the enclosure, turn on the light, turn on the exhaust fan. Now that's a piece of graphite there. I have to center it, find out what the center is, make some marks and everything so we know where to start. So I'll bring you back when I get that part done. All right, so there it is. Um, it's fastened down, it's tightened. Um, I'm not sure if y'all can see that X, but that center spot, you've gotta know where that is. Replacement of your bit, because you've got to, the table relates to the software in the machine. So if you tell it to start from center, it, it has to know where center is. So you have to manually dial that in by hand so it has center before you start. Alright, so this probably won't be the best view in the world, but basically I build whatever it is in a different program. So I had to build the graphite block, exact same measurements as what's in the machine. Then I had to build this, the dollar sign. Then I had to set the dollar sign into the block and subtract it out of the block so it leaves a, a hole. <clears throat> I tried this last night with just the dollar sign not thinking and it was cutting everything out what will just left me a dollar sign that's that's not gonna work out too good. So once you get that set there you have to go to your workspace here um, you've got to connect to the machine over there through uh, you know Bluetooth um, which you can also wire them together. You can put writing in if you want or whatever. It'll it'll do that too. But as you can see over here, hopefully you can see this is the size of the block. It's uh, 10 centimeters, which is the same as 100 millimeters. So it's 10 this way and 10 that way, and it's uh, only like five thick. So uh, hopefully we got the measurements right. So once we get this set up and this put over here, you have to click on this, tell it next. It wants to know what object you're creating a toolpath for, so we're already clicked on this. So create toolpath. So we're going to carve target depth is going to be 4 millimeters. Allowance is the amount the material remaining on the object that needs to be carved in the future operations. We're not worried about that. Then you have to go in here and put what type of bit. So we are ball in the mill. Should be. Yep. And the size of the bit. Then you have to go and start worrying about your work speeds. So too slow, it just goes forever. Uh, too fast, and you break the material and rip the material, or and or um, break your bit. So step down is how much you want it to step down each time for each run. It's at a half a millimeter step over is how far you want that bit to move over for the next run going around it 
and you don't want to go past three quarters of your bit's width or you're just putting too much pressure on it and uh, I actually had it at, at 0.5 I'm going to cut that down to 0.25 which is going to double the time but it should leave a smoother finish that way <clears throat> alright jog speed is how fast it moves when it's not cutting jog height is set the distance between the tool and the material when the tool is not carving let's go with uh, let's see it's going down four so we'll set it at five alright so we'll save that so your tool path is ready so then you have to generate your G code this right here shows you your tool path you can see the little lines back and forth um, so then we're going to export load the g-code to the workspace this shows you exactly on the machine where it is um, so you come down and hit start job actually let's cancel that for a second uh, let me go back close back all right so that's leaving yeah all right let's export load to workspace there's your preview which is not a hundred percent correct it's only showing to 40 um, but 50 is the size of the thing the block the thing start job send to device so it's now transferring from the computer over there it says it's done so I have to receive it over there alright so as you can see file transfer successful you hit here that you got it once that's been done you can disconnect from the computer we need to back out of the settings we're going to hit start it's going to always be the top one you're going to tell it you're ready it tells you to put safety goggles on now you have set your work origin and all that so that's where stuff starts to get difficult I'm going to see if I can make enough room to back y'all up where y'all can actually see this Alright, so this tends to be where I climb in the machine. I seem to be doing that a lot. That's the only problem I have with this enclosure is you have to bend over in it. Now this side does open, which helps in some instances. And if I didn't have all this stuff over here, I'd set y'all on that side so you could watch. But you have such a work origin, so it has to know where to start with that bit. That's what you put the center on here for. So you have to move it all manually And you're going to change how fast it's moving with each time you touch it. Because worker origin on the computer was set at center. looks pretty center so you're going to say 
set work origin. And with that, I actually didn't get it quite close enough. All right. So now it's set. So now you got to take it, run it up far enough it's not going to hit any of those clips or anything, and you're going to tell it to run its boundary. Bringing it down and running the boundary until you know it's within that, and I don't think it is, so I'm gonna have to make some adjustments. Like it's off about 10 millimeters. So, y'all give me just a minute, let me make some adjustments. All right, so it says we are about two hours and 39 minutes from it being done. So, it's been running for what an hour maybe I don't remember yeah hour and 12 minutes and uh, this is where we're at you really can't see much because all the graphite falls you know right back in and it just settles right there it doesn't really run way off um, pretty sure this won't really help much but uh, it is working this is my first ever graphite mold I tried one last night and did it backwards so took me a few tries to get it right and uh, we are now in business I now pretty much know what I'm doing so I should be able to continue making them um, I'm still got to learn the bits this is a rounded bit I'm using uh, I've got like five or six different bits so I have to kind of learn which one is is for what and uh, Maybe set up, learn to set up different stages and uh, changing the bit out so I can get good detail in there if, if it's something that needs good detail. So I will uh, bring y'all back when it's finished and uh, show you what we got. complete took uh, three hours and 34 minutes As you can see, it graphite just piles up on top. You get a little off spray here or there. <clears throat> Some will get to the bucket and stuff, and we're going to dump it and uh, see what it looks like. Alright, so. This is the uh, finished product. So this is the first thing I've made. As I said, backside was my first attempt. It was backwards. 
so I stopped it. Made some readjustments the next night and uh, did this. So, this is something I would be willing to do for somebody. Um, if it was something they wanted for pouring metal in or something like that. So, anyway, I wanted to share that with y'all. Kind of how to go through the steps, processes, and stuff like that. Hope y'all enjoyed.